Only in 1832 in Scotland was a law enacted that was suitable for the requirements of the, the training of medical students. Until that time, the only legal way to obtain a body for the practice of anatomy was from that of a person who had been hung. The need for practical experience in anatomy was so great this led to demand for bodies from other sources. There is the famous Burke and Hare, but in general bodies were collected by people called body snatchers or sometimes resurrectionists. And these bodies were temporarily stored before being delivered to the medical schools, where a considerable sum of money will be passed on to those who obtain them. A number of systems developed to try and frustrate the activities of the body snatchers. One was the watch tower, where either the family or people who were paid to do so would keep a watch on the cemetery. Another would be the mort safes. These could be either like iron coffins, which would be permanently put in place, sometimes with metal cages. On other occasions, the cage attached to the ground could be higher for a period of time. There were also large memorial stones that were made of cast iron, too heavy to move. And finally, a smaller version was of mort stone, although these could be extremely heavy. A system that developed, particularly in the northeast of Scotland, was that of the mort house. The basis for this was that medical students could only use bodies that were in a reasonable condition. So if a body was left for long enough, it would be no use. These mort houses would hold bodies for between six weeks in summer and up to three months in winter, after which the body was buried as normal. These mort houses often required a fairly considerable financial input to construct in the first place, and this was often paid for by subscribers. The benefit was it did not require attention by a lookout, and therefore the cost of the security um, was covered by the lack of the need to pay somebody to look after the building constantly. To save on costs, many of the mort houses were either partly or almost totally subterranean. If built above ground, they're often of bunker-like appearance, built with uh, very strong, large blocks of stone, often granite. They would also have doors, which would be an outer door made of wood, strengthened with iron, and an inner door made of metal plate. These doors would have several locks with complex arrangements to make it very difficult for them to be picked or any way forced. The buildings usually had several air vents and some were even lead lined to prevent the ingress of water. The coffins also had to be airtight and were often covered with a metal layer, sometimes with lead. They often had a slate or perhaps a turf roof, but beneath that would be a, a stone vault, making it very difficult to break in. The buildings are usually square or rectangular, and at least one was round that created extra difficulties for breaking through it. After 1832, the buildings ceased to have their original function. Some were converted into buildings for, say, the Kirk Session to meet, others simply for storage. Occasionally, they were simply abandoned, and at least one has been converted to house an ancient Pictish stone. If all these methods failed and bodies were snatched, they were sometimes stored into a sufficient number to take to the medical school. Ockenhavy Castle in Ayrshire is said to be one such place where bodies were stored.